We're back again with the new Creators Edition series with Chris Somney on this week's show, and we're going to be taking a look at a page of Chris's work on Daredevil. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Ass, and with Chris Somney this week, we're going to show you some of the cool work going on in the pages of some of the best comics. Now, the thing that immediately jumped out on me at this page was how you trap and limit Daredevil and kind of release him at the end for that big jump moment. And you seem to do that by framing within frames, such as that staircase in panel three and the doorway in panel five. Is that a conscious decision? Yeah, for sure. Panel five, he's made it to the top of the staircase. He's coming through a, the door at the on the roof. There are two purple bits on either side. Mm -hmm. That's the door to the staircase. And then, yeah, he's free on the last panel. And that big yellow. Love it. Love it. <laughs> the iconography is really big in the frame for the first panel. And then actually the end panel makes Daredevil kind of small, which is sort of the opposite of what you'd normally find for a superhero reveal. In the Nelson Blake episode, we talked about using small moments and then bursting out to the big reveal, but here you kind of got the opposite. We're trying something different with this arc. This was the first issue of volume four of Daredevil, and mm -hmm. he was going to become less Daredevil and more Matt Murdock. So yeah. He's bigger as Matt Murdock in panel one than he is as Daredevil in the final panel. But also there's that fun iconography of like Superman pulling open his shirt and you see like the Superman <laughs> symbol and I couldn't not do that. So <laughs> so we have that and then you see him like casting off his, his Matt Murdock identity in the staircase and then becoming Daredevil. The Daredevil title is actually bigger than the character because the title is what's more important than anything but it's just gonna be daredevil from now on it doesn't matter if he's wearing a costume or not and this is the first time we're gonna see him in costume in, in, in this volume and i didn't want it to be so big that you forget about matt murdoch because we're gonna be following matt and foggy and kirsten and if you're just thinking about the superhero the whole time you you just want to get back to the superhero and talking again about iconography, we never really see Daredevil in this. It's all just kind of ideas of him or distant visuals. We don't ever really see him. But because you don't really need it. I mean, you can see that he's, he's in a superhero costume. You don't really need to see his face. I've been doing a lot of that with Widow, too, where there's just a shape. It's just a black shape because you know that that's who that is. <laughs> you, know, you know, she's the she's the lead. You don't really need to see her face. It's like old Tintin comics. So it's just like... Here's a little oval with two dots, and you know who it is. You don't need every last line to, to sell something. Sometimes it's just uh, cartooning is enough to give you the idea of what, what something is. Are you kind of aware and asking yourself the question with things like that? Are you sort of saying, like, we don't need to see him, let's just obscure him? Sometimes it's just going with your gut, and a lot of times going with your gut is the best way to, to do it because that's what's going to read for the reader and uh, a lot of comics is just flying by the seat of my pants and hoping for the best <laughs> um, I'm still learning on the job I've been, I've been doing this professionally since I was in my 20s I'm 36 now and you know I feel like I've got enough of a hang of it where sometimes my instincts are going to be right and I just need to, to learn to go with them if that makes any sense at all <laughs> I don't know if I'm just rambling here so I guess you just kind of develop your own personal visual language that you work to working day in day out well sometimes there's like you can do tricks with the eye line and sometimes you can do tricks make the reader's eye move and i try and do those consciously when i can sometimes i do it unconsciously and i just say <laughs> yay <laughs> that worked out well <laughs> and sometimes you know you can be working on the page and go you have to consciously say like if i do this then that makes the reader do that then that's the math of it that's the science and that's exciting and then sometimes it works out in your favor without even having to think about it and then that's just gravy <laughs> then you have to take that and go, oh yeah, I totally did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and the other big thing with Daredevil has always been, you know, Hell's Kitchen, right? For a lot of superheroes, location does play a big part of their story. And Daredevil is known for being placed just in Hell's Kitchen in New York. Is there anything you want to do with that in the work? There's more that I'm trying to ground it for the reader so that they feel like they're reading the real world and they're not just reading a comic that takes place in some amorphous, fake New York. That was what I set out to do with Daredevil was just that it's a fictional New York because Hell's Kitchen isn't Hell's Kitchen anymore. It's, you know, it's Clinton. It's gentrified and it's clean and it's not what it is in the comics. So I got to make a fictional New York for Daredevil. But with Widow, I wanted it to feel grounded and real. That made it so that I was doing a little less cartooning in the acting and in, in the style, it's a little more grounded. In your style, you know, with that, you bring this heavy inking and shroud Daredevil in heavy black. But along with that, it's a saturated red. What conversations did you have about making that part of the visual style? Yeah, I mean, I figured his costume is really dark red. Like, I like it when he's colored, you know, 50% R and 50% yellow. <laughs> um, or 50%, <laughs> well, you know, like, it's just a perfect red. Um, when I started with uh, Javier, I was like, can we please just make him Hellboy red 
all the time. Like no matter what the light source is, or no matter what kind of bounce light we have, just always make him perfect red and that'll always he'll always pop on any page but i always thought his costume would be really dark he's always covered in shadow all the way back to wally wood and, and gene colin but yeah so i i always inked him really really heavily because you know he has to blend into the shadows it's just that that pop art red it's too cool to pass up and so that's it for this third and final episode of Chris Somney's Creators Edition. If you'd like to hear more, there's longer audio-only conversations with myself and Chris over at the Patreon, extended answers and lots of extra little details we didn't get time to get to in these Creators Editions episodes. So if you're a fan of Strip Panel Naked and would like to support while getting access to a whole host of extra content, please check out our Patreon because we'd absolutely love your support. And you can also find me on Twitter at HassanOE, where I post a bunch of extra page breakdowns. And finally, hit subscribe to keep up to date with all the Strip Panel Naked episodes. And as always, see you next week.